the two New York teams at the top, the Yankees and Mets, the only teams to hit the 40-win mark this season. All right, let's welcome in the man who compiled the list, CBS Sports Baseball writer Matt Snyder, and our World Series champion, Will Middlebrooks. Uh, the Braves, 10 and a half games out of first place in the NL East. When the winning streak got started, it's now trimmed to five and a half games on Sunday. So, Matt, what's been the biggest thing influencing this current winning run for them? Well, they've got some some new blood in there. William Contreras came up from the minors, and he's been unbelievable. Michael Harris has provided a bit of a spark to the offense. But there's also Ronald Acuna Jr. here. He's playing like an MVP right now. He missed almost the whole first month of the season. The team was just still kind of getting its legs underneath it after that long extended World Series run. The bullpen wasn't that great in April. It's been unbelievable now. Uh, Kenley Jansen, they're anchoring it. But A.J. Mentor, you just can't say enough about how he how good he has been. Uh, they have been beating up on weaker competition here in this uh, winning streak here. It's been the, the Diamondbacks, Rockies, A's, and Pirates. But the thing about good teams is they take care of business against bad teams, and that's what the Braves have been doing. Not just winning, say, two-thirds of these games. They've won every single game there. And uh, I think there's a little bit of a championship swagger. Will could speak to that. But I feel like after you've won the championship, once you get things going the next year, there's an aura in the locker room that feels like, yeah, we're back right now. We are that good. We are those guys. And that's what I feel like they've got going on right now. Yeah, and to echo what Matt said, they, they're beating up on bad teams, but that's what good teams do. Diamondbacks, Rockies, A's, Pirates, you have to beat those teams. They have the Nat, they're going to play the Nats next, then the Cubs. So I could see this extending this winning streak, at least winning both those series against two teams that are playing terrible right now. But you said it, Matt. Ronald Acuna is back to doing Ronald Acuna things. Over the past 15 games, he's hitting 333 with four homers. Uh, over the past seven games, a 1,400 OPS, so uh, it, it's absurd. He's a spark plug, and when he is in that lineup, opposing pitchers have to attack the entire lineup differently. Even the, the seven, eight, nine hitters, you don't want them on base with Acuna coming up, so they get better pitches to hit because you don't want to walk them, and, and in return, it makes your entire lineup dangerous. But yeah, their bullpen is the best in the National League right now. A 3.02 ERA. Kinley Jansen, 18 saves. That's second to only Josh Hader's 19. And as you mentioned, uh, take it on the Washington Nationals. Uh, that series starting at 7.05 p.m. tonight at Nationals Park. Let's talk about the New York Yankees. They can take a stranglehold on the AL East this week. Three-game series against both Toronto and Tampa Bay. Well, they're on pace to set a new wins record in the majors. Have they come close to their peak yet? I sure hope so. Yeah. You know, I'm you know I'm Red Sox through and through. So I and I'm not afraid to be biased there. I, but but you have to respect what what the Yankees are doing right now. They're on pace for 119 wins, three more than the all-time record set by the the Mariners at uh, tw uh, 01, uh, 116. But they lead ba all of baseball in OPS, slugging, home runs, ERA, WHIP. This goes on and on. But I think what's most impressive to me is their run differential. Plus 127. That's that's 21 better than the than the Dodgers. You look at the Houston Astros, who are the second highest in the American League. We still got you, Will. We still got you. Okay, you guys are back. I'm sorry. Everything froze on my end. No anyways, worries. Back to the run. Anyways, back to the run differential. Sorry about that. Hey, it's okay. working from home. The beats are working at home on live television. It's fun. <laughs> Anyways, the Dodgers, they're better than the Dodgers in the run differential. They're 84 runs better than the Astros, who have the second highest run differential in the American League. But yeah, I talked to a couple guys in the clubhouse over there, Judge, Trevino, those guys, and they said there's just a culture change. They can feel it. They know how talented they are, but they come to the field every day expecting to win, expecting to dominate. You know, look at, in, in my opinion, I think culture eats strategy for breakfast. Now, let me explain that. You can have a game plan, you can have a pitching matchup, all that, but if you don't have a will to win and a team that works together, it absolutely doesn't matter. Look at Matt Carpenter. He comes in, his, it looked like his career was over with. They signed him and now he's the first player to hit six homers in 10 games with the club. Something's contagious in that clubhouse right now. Matt, if the Yankees uh, sweep this series, both series this week, Tampa Bay and Toronto, is that it? For the AL East in 2022? Oh, probably. I mean, that would be, gosh, that would put it up to what, 11 and a half and 12 and a half? Yeah, that would probably be it. And it's not just 
that the lead is insurmountable. We've seen comebacks like this before. It was the A's, one of those A's teams, 2012 or 2014 or so, came back from around uh, 11 or 12 uh, late in May. But it's more that if you look at and you say, let's take the Blue Jays, for example, and let's say they're down by 10 games after this week. Are they a true talent team of 10 games better than the Yankees the rest of the way from that point in the season? I don't think there's any way anybody would say that. So I think that this week is an opportunity for both the Rays and the Blue Jays to carve into that lead, but it's an opportunity for the Yankees to try to at least kind of bury those teams. Matt, so yeah, me, I, I would say, yeah. Sorry, Matt, let me just follow just by asking you, are, is there a concern that the Yankees are hitting their peak this early in the season? Because, I mean, as Will will attest to, he can certainly attest to as a World Series champion, the, the season is like a roller coaster. So is there any concern about the Yankees hitting their stride so soon? I mean, I think somewhat for people like us, we might can say, oh, well, they're picking too early. Maybe they won't be as good come late August, come September, come October, which is most important. But there's also examples of teams that were this good this early and won the World Series anyway. Just recently, the 2016 Cubs, 2017 Astros, I don't think through 60 they were necessarily this good, but they were close, and they ended up winning the World Series. And, and they both went through bad stretches, but then they got things together in time to win the World Series. And if you're going to ride the Yankees and say they're going to win the World Series right now, that's kind of the path that you would expect, is you would say they will go through bad stretches. Every team does. We all know that. But I, I think they're good enough to weather the storm and, and make a run into deep in, into late October. And you see the Dodgers still a plus 400 uh, to win the World Series, but obviously the Dodgers going through one of those uh, down moments right now uh, with the Yankees sitting at plus 500 uh, to win the World Series. All right, a team sitting just outside the top 10 this week is the Boston Red Sox, Will. Uh, Matt said there's just too much of a glut in that upper middle tier right now. So what's the biggest issue for the Red Sox as we move into the back end of the month? Yeah, they're not in the top 10 for their overall record. Let's be honest. They're only three games over 500. They, but over the last month, they've been one of the best teams in baseball. I mean, you look at their record, 9-2 and two over their last 11, 18-7 and seven over their last 25. That's the best in baseball. Uh, and the stat line I like the best is 7-1-2 and two in their last 10 series. How do you dig out of an early season hole? Win series. Take two of three, three of four. Just keep chipping away and you dig yourself out. They just went on the West Coast and they are historically awful going on the West Coast. They went eight and two on that trip, posted a two, three ERA with four shutout wins. But I want to point out JD Martinez. He's reached base by via hit or walk in 49 of 51 games this season. His last 30 games, he's hitting 381 with over a thousand OPS and he's been just so consistent. Uh, now, with all that said, I think what's funny is they were 11 games back of the Yankee when they started Yankees when they were when they started the West Coast trip. <laughs> they went eight and two, and now they're 12 and a half games behind the Yankees. So that just shows how good the New York Yankees are right now. And they open up a uh, series against Oakland uh, in Boston at Fenway on Tuesday. All right, let's talk about the sliding Milwaukee Brewers. They have issues up and down their roster. They get the New York Mets next, so it's not going to get any easier for the Brew Crew. Half game back of St. Louis, but a full eight games up on Pittsburgh. How do they right the ship here, Matt? Well, it's going to be tough because the rotation's a mess right now. I mean, Peralta's out until at least September. Brandon Woodruff's hurt right now. They were two of the three aces that they had last year in road to the playoffs. Corbin Burns has been good, but not much more than good lately. Eric Lauer just had a meltdown against the Nationals, who are not very good. So what looked like one of the biggest strengths of the team has kind of become a weakness right now. The offense is uninspiring. Christian Yelich isn't close to MVP form. Uh, Keston Hero looks like it's never he's never really going to be a thing. Lorenzo Cain is well past his prime. Andrew McCutcheon's past his prime. They, the offense just looks like it's going to be not that great throughout the season. Like I said, I'm concerned about the rotation. The bullpen is not as deep as it has been in years past in front of Josh Hader and Devin Williams. So there are a lot of concerns there. How they get it fixed? I I guess the rest of the rotation, other than Burns, starts throwing a lot better. Lauer looks like he does earlier in the season. They need to get Woodruff back. He needs to look like he did last year. And then they need to kind of hold down the fort until Peralta comes back. I'm not confident in them. Two weeks ago, uh, when the Cardinals were down, I think, three and a half games, I said the Cardinals are going to win the division, and I feel even more strongly about it now. Yeah, Brewers-Mets, a series that kicks off on Tuesday. You saw 2-8 and eight in their last 10 for the Brewers. Lastly, disgruntled fans of the Chicago White Sox Started chanting, fire Tony in the late stages of Saturday's loss to Texas. They're four and six in their last ten. They've lost two straight. Matt, is it time to fire Tony? Yeah, I think so. And it's 
it, it's funny. It's one of those things that I, I never think it's necessarily always the manager's fault. If you look at Joe Girardi and Joe Madden and what, what just happened, it's hard to like pin 100% of the blame on the manager because there's so many different variables that come into losing streaks like they went through. But then the Phillies went out and they started 8-0 under Rob Thompson and they kept singing his praises and the players were talking about how much better things felt. And I couldn't help but think back to one of my fictional idols in Crash Davis and when he said, if you think you're winning because, and you can insert anything there, then you are. And if the Phillies thought they were winning just because they had a new manager, then they were. That is why they were winning. And I feel like there just might be something there with the White Sox that might happen in similar fashion. Maybe they make a change. Maybe La Russa retires. Maybe they have somebody come by and start planting the seeds in his head every day and telling him, hey, you know how cool it would be to be retired right now? And then maybe he change, He goes, oh, you know what? And then he thinks it's his idea and he steps down. And then they get hot all of a sudden. Then they think maybe that's why they got hot as they change managers. I'm just saying, I think they would be better if they change managers. But, but Matt, given the injury situation, I mean, do you think maybe they, yeah. they should wait? No, it's a good opportunity to do it. I, I think they would be better without him because – his lineups are perplexing. He hasn't been great with bullpen management all year. He makes bad mistakes. He compounds them, as we just saw with the uh, the one-two count to Trey Turner thing. Um, I, and it is injury some, but it's also underperformance. Yohan Moncada has been as bad as anybody in baseball, and he should be way better. And, uh, you know, Jose Abreu is 35 years old. I, maybe he's hitting father time right now, and he's going to be – more just good and not MVP caliber. There's a lot of things there that aren't just injuries. And like I said, maybe a little bit of a change might kind of light a fire under them. Yeah, Kopech adding his name to the injury list over the course of the weekend. They are CBS Sports baseball writer Matt Snyder, World Series champion Will Middlebrooks, giving us the latest from the majors as the power rankings are out. Here are the remaining power rankings. 21 to 30, the Athletics holding up everybody else. You can view the full list with Matt's reasoning behind each and every team being where they are over on CBSSports.com. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.